Mr Deputy Speaker, of all, the of all of the responsibilities vested in those who sit in this House, none is more important than protecting Queenslanders. Yeah. Queenslanders deserve a government that provides the resources and enables their police and corrective services personnel so that they can maintain a safe environment that the community can have confidence in. That's why I'm so disappointed in the Palaszczuk government's knee-jerk, reactive response to community concern regarding the unsupervised release of recidivist deviants. Queenslanders should be able to have confidence that egregious predators such as Robert John Farden are tracked for the rest of their natural life. The rights of perpetrators should come second to community safety. Mr Deputy Speaker, we've seen considerable community concern over recent years when repeat offenders have committed rape and murder while on parole or shortly after release. It isn't good enough. We owe it to the people of Queensland to do whatever needs to be done to protect the vulnerable. It's clear that the government are unwilling to make the hard decisions to protect Queenslanders and instead have sought to put a band-aid on the issue by introducing their weak legislation today. Let's be clear. Despite the Attorney-General's assertions that suggest otherwise, these amendments introduced by the government today seek to stop Robert John Farden from roaming unsupervised within the community after his super supervision order expires on the 3rd of October. And I wholeheartedly support that objective. Frankly, steps should have been taken months ago in anticipation of the fact that such a situation may occur. But all that aside, I welcome the fact that the government has finally decided to do something about an individual who has proven time and again that he is a threat to vulnerable Queenslanders and is not capable of adhering to society's expectations. Unfortunately, it's too little, too late. Rather than drafting a considered piece of legislation and following the proper process of committee scrutiny, this government has slapped together a rushed and inadequate piece of legislation that doesn't go far enough. It's obvious that those opposite woke up on Sunday and read the media reports about the LNP's tough measures, and then we saw those opposite talking tough in the media, and then today those opposite have come in here and they've failed to deliver. They can talk tough on crime, but when it comes down to it, Labor just don't have the stomach to do what is required to protect the people of Queensland. We've already heard today those opposite assert that under their, their laws, serious offenders will be tracked. But the facts are, for a GPS tracker to be applied, a reportable offender must engage in concerning con conduct that is then intercepted by the police, brought before the court, and then sanctioned by a court as a part of a prohibition order. And Mr Deputy Speaker, the explanatory notes make it clear that such an order will only remain in force for five years. It isn't good enough to wait until a known offender has engaged in concerning conduct before acting. If an individual is a serious danger to the community, then they should be subject to supervision for the rest of their life without question. Not may be, not could be, will be. What Queenslanders deserve, Mr Deputy Speaker, is legislation that mandates serious offenders are GPS tracked for life not some honesty system that will place additional strain on a police service already heaving under the weight of weak sentences and a lack of resources. I, along with other parents from across the state, demand that this government protect our children from those who will do them harm. To the point raised by the member for Kiwana today, I for one would not be willing to have a recidivist serious offender living unsupervised in my street, and neither should anyone else. I urge the government to strengthen these laws to mandate the supervision of all violent sexual offenders for life, not only those who commit offences against children. Moving on to the provisions contained in the bill which was considered by the committee, I note the concerns expressed by the Bar Association and the Queensland Law Society in relation to some of the provisions contained within the bill. In particular, in relation to the provisions that relate to the establishment of a missing person crime scene. I note the concerns in relation to the fact that such provisions may infringe the rights and liberty, liberties of owners and occupiers. And while I recognise that such measures could be subject to misuse, the greater good of the community in ensuring that the police are able to investigate and deal with critical incidents should take precedence. I welcome the changes to the parole system contained within the bill. 
As I mentioned previously, there is considerable community concern in relation to the parole system, and measures such as those contained within the bill provide some comfort in relation to those concerns. Mr Deputy Speaker, the new offence for assaulting or obstructing a civilian watch house officer is also welcome. Similarly, separating the offence of assaulting or obstructing a police officer into two distinct offences is a step in the right direction. Our police deserve to be able to perform their important task of maintaining community safety without being assaulted or obstructed. The persistent cases of soft sentences handed down to those who think it's OK to assault our police are not in line with community expectation. Mr Deputy Speaker, the people of Budrum deserve to feel safe in their community. The rights of the majority who do not repeatedly rape and assault others must come ahead of those who choose to engage in such disgusting behaviour. For that reason, I implore the government to listen to the community's voice and strengthen the provisions in relation to supervision of repeat sexual offenders.